Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2, where the best Terran in the world will educate us on where to place your first barracks, which is pretty much as close to your opponent as possible. I introduce the Frenchman from Team Liquid in the blue. It's Clem. And, well, the aforementioned opponent, just a hop skip and a Reaper jump away, building a Nexus unawares. The best pro toss out there, the Twilight Toss. It's Max Pax. And starting things off, just as early as ever. The kids' table once again battling it out, a best of five finals. And here comes Clem with the SCV in a precarious position, slapping down the bunker before I can even beg you for likes. And if you haven't made it there yet, it'd be awesome if you could subscribe. And Jimmy, what are we? 1,297 1, likes on this series, on this cast, on this final. And I'll cast another one. And I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get just a little bit better than this probes who died th so that the shield battery could live. Well, it was going to die anyways. Getting the shield battery was just a bonus at the last moment. Trying for the citizen's arrest, but the reaper slipping through. Clem made sure to butter it up beforehand. The probes are not going to be enough. So just slapping the shield battery down. The Reaper, not so great at killing the buildings, but when you've got a building around your Reaper, it makes it a little bit easier. Clem, of course, going to dodge the shots as the Stalker tries to get involved. He's targeting the shield battery, actually eats a hit. If you get close enough, the projectile... Oh my god. I... I mean... Well... A second Stalker, the SCV... Going full Neo here, but Neo couldn't repair. All right, down goes the shield battery. The Reapers are chasing. The bunker is still alive. It's not even burning yet. So the Stalkers will eventually chip away at it, but Clem has bought a lot of space here. Now the question will be how long. He's just going to let it burn. He's going to watch it burn. So he wants to save the pylon. Try to get a little bit more in the way of shields. Might kill a Stalker. Gets one. Actually targeting the pylon. One more shot! Gets it, the Marine! Hero Marine. He couldn't make it to the finals. Probably because of one of these two, but... Shows up in the very first game. Takes out the pylon just before the Stalkers take it out in turn. And it may have looked bad. It may have looked like Max Pex was set far behind, but Clem... Well, he has a Cyclone here, so... Maybe we'll make good on the damage he did. But Clem is down seven workers. He's just now expanding back at home. If Max Pax is able to hold this and he keeps the Stalker alive, jukes to the side, gets another Cyclone. The aggression continues. Another Marine will go down to the Stalkers. But Clem is able to grab another couple and three probes as well. But Max Pax has maintained his position throughout this. He still has two bases. He has a Stargate done, of all things, which is going to work out incredibly well. I think he's played Clem too many times at this point. He knows what the options are. And in this particular case, especially since Clem sent the first Cyclone across and, and traded it out, the Oracle is actually going to be an amazing choice. And I don't think Clem has any knowledge. I, he, I'm, he's assuming Blink Stalker. It's always Blink Stalker. And technically he'd be right, but at the wrong time. As a single Oracle on the way across, it is a small risk. You can always fly over a widow mine, despite your best efforts. But it is unlikely Clem will have one in position or even be anticipating this at all. The Oracle takes out the SCV while barely slowing down. Probably trying to make sure he doesn't fly into anything in particular. But there's no widow mine indicator, but a lock on from the Cyclone. Another Cyclone will drive him away. But after this dramatic start, oh, I love that too. Recalls out of vision. What he doesn't know can definitely hurt him. Same goes for both sides, really, but Clem in this case. He is building. So, Max Pax saw the cloak researching on the tech lab uh, a starport. He recalled the Oracle back home. He should have the detection with that revelation. Waiting for his Phoenix to be done. Slaps it on. And we'll be able to take it out. Clem just going to take a couple more probes with him. Five probes down. So Clem doing some more damage. He keeps throwing units at Max Pax, and they're doing damage, but not enough, I think, to justify their cost. And so far, Max Pax has deflected 
And by deflected, I mean taking the hits. Just made sure they weren't critical ones. Which is really an art form when it comes to dealing with Clem. Because he will get damage done. It's just a matter of what comes after. Blink is now completed. It's Max Pax's turn for the first time coming across the map. It's only been six and a half minutes. We've just had a lot of heated conversations between them. Mentally for the Protoss, of course. That real Phoenix here, not hallucinated. There is a siege tank, but he could lift it with the Phoenix. Indeed. I wonder if uh, Max Pax actually can just get stim as it is. Here come the Marines. Just cancels the stim outright denied. Denied. And now the reactor is vulnerable. Oracle's still back at home, but Max Pax, so far, oh well, the stalker's taking a few hits, but getting stim and getting the reactor on the starport, huge wins here for Max Pax to start off game one. And another Banshee's coming in. The Oracle is in position to deal with it. Will cloak, but the Oracle should slap the Revelation on, and the Stalker should slap the Banshee down. So far, everything Clem has tried. Even the bunker being mitigated, and now getting less and less return. Losing Stim significantly. Losing Stim in the reactor, those are the two most important things of the two things you need to do a Stim medevac push. You need Stim and Metavacs, all right? Like and subscribe for more profound wisdom like that. All right, I'm here all night, usually only night, but that's not really relevant. All right. Stim, Combat Shield, and Plus One now all on the way, but Max Pax already has his third base well saturated. He's got Plus One, Charge, about to complete. Is that the first or second Robo? First Robo. But the production is coming online. The gateway count is exploding. Uh, oh my god, get that brat! Ah! Probius! Sir! Ah! <laughs> oh no! Papers, please! Papers! Pl really? A blink? There's still two. Now, this. Hmm. Hmm. Bureaucracy has never been such a problem. Nope, there's a fight happening, but the most important thing is the fight with this probe. The probe somehow beating a dozen blink stalkers in this battle. Forcing them to blink over, because he will not move. They said hold this position, and indeed he will. All right, so Max Pax actually kind of loses some of the... Because of the probe blocking the watchtower, it kind of hamstrings the stalker timing. He wasn't able to get all the stalkers to deny the third base quite as quickly as he would have wanted. I don't think it would have made the overall difference. I don't think that is the difference between Clem taking a third or not, but... The Stalkers have no window to do damage now, as Stim, Combat Shield, and Plus One are all done. Max Pax adding Robo number two, Dark Shrine number one, and Robo Bay. Well, first one as well, but... So, the double Ds of destruction are on the table. The Disruptors and the Dark Templar. As Clem has shored up his defenses and won't be taking too much more damage from the Stalkers. They'll still pick up a few Marauder kills. The Charge Lots are coming around. And with the charge lots in front, able to pick up another medevac as well. Max Pax and Immortals and Sentries being added on. This is becoming a concern. Well, Clem has enough to drive it back for now. But this was a diversionary, well, not really a diversionary, but a delaying tactic from Max Pax, who's now getting double Robo Colossus, extended Thermal Lance, DT Blink, and plus two. But we can't undersell Clem. Never should. As he does have 10 more supply, he just has so much production online, and while he might not have been able to put together an army to attack uh, after that early aggression, he still has plenty of army now ready for this mid-game fight. Armory, a little bit later on, if Max Pax is able to get to uh, that double robo, like 3-4 Colossi, before Clem is coming across the map. That's a solid ticket. Force fields will lock in a few marines. Something. The zealots will get shaved off. But the war prism at the back, trying to keep him busy. And this is all the space he'll need. Oof. EMP plus Vikings take down the war prism pretty quick. But the zealots are already inside of the main. Five SCVs down. Clearly just trying to buy time. The reactor will die yet again. What is this? The double colossi on the low ground. 
the uh, Protoss Siege Tank push here. The Colossi using the Reaper Cliff, more as a matter of principle than anything, but Clem is able to pick up and get out. Seven SCVs down to the Zealot, but Max Pack still losing a lot of his supply, though not the important pieces. Immortals, Colossi, Sentries, ideally the Stalkers. The Zealots are expendable. In fact, that's most of their life goal. A Disruptor, I don't think that's intentionally waiting there. A Scouting Disruptor, a classic tactic. Though maybe not the most cost-effective one. Oracle still intact, though takes a volley from the Vikings. Revelation, very helpful here. Three Ruptors at a time from Max Pax. It's gonna come down to whether uh, Clem can dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. As always, he has a way of making those Disruptors look almost useless compared to literally anyone else. But the Siege Tanks... A fadeaway shot, not going to be nearly enough. The siege tanks pounding the point home onto the Colossi. And now Clem is maxed out. He's got 2-2 on the way. His unit composition is good. The upgrades, not so much. But he's maxed out with almost nowhere to go. Kind of surprised Clem is even sitting around and waiting uh, for any extra aggression. As really there's no upgrades finishing anytime soon. Maybe he's intimidated by Max Pax's army. Doesn't want to risk it before he gets 2-2 done. He's starting to build up a bank. Two more command centers are in production. And the, oh no, the, the DTs! They have blink! Disruptors will ward away. A fortuitous scan out of Clem. We'll see the DTs before they can strike. And now a fleet beacon for Max Pax. As he works his way up towards the carriers. Maybe Tempest. Both are on the table. Double Warp Prism from Max Pax as well. He's essentially filling in everything. What else don't we have? Observer Speed is probably next after Warp Prism Speed. Plus one Arrow Weapons. He's got three Rebels. A Fusion Core out of Clem. But uh, very likely for the Advanced Ballistics, though. I'm keeping my options open. Good Disruptor hit. No losses for Max Pax, who has a lot of money in the bank. So three Tempests on the way. DT's headed over towards the right side as Clem has opened up the opportunity. The DT's looking to get something done here. Still jockeying for position. Three Tempests at a time. The Colossi starting to work on the Siege Tax. Not particularly well suited to it, but they'll get that. He fires a broadside! Oh my god! Just rapid fire unloaded every Ruptor. Knowing, uh, well, he, that's one way to cancel a command center. An observer out in front. Taken out immediately. There's still three siege tanks hiding behind the backup command center here. So Clem, still, it's going to be hard for us, Max Pax, to get too much damage done. Ruptor shots. Double prism to the main, just making sure he could get there. And indeed he will. Left. He left enough supply open in order to do this warp and he had plenty of money but this is why Max Pax was leaving his supply at like 180, 185 to do the mass warping in the main. Is it going to be enough at the end of the day as the Vikings clear out the warp prism? Seven SCVs down. He'll see the fusion core. Tempest begins shelling the northern base. Looking for the siege tanks but the marines underneath and the robo, the mech protoss army. It's Tempest Colossi and Disruptors. There's not even any gateway units. A scam. Wow. Clem actually saw the shimmer of the DTs, even before they came in detection range. Max Pax is able to get in and get out, though. Are there any gateway units down there? Not a single one. Pure Robo Stargate. Finally, some stalkers move in. But is this peak Protoss? The Mass Tempest, uh, a bit more reliable than Carriers, if less potential. The Disruptors are on the corner. He's picking off one Viking at a time. Caduceus Reactor is the first choice. Finally, we're seeing that upgrade get a lot more use. I credit Gumiho. Whenever there's something created from Terran, I think you can pretty safely credit Gumiho, though. Uh, as Gumiho seems to be one of the only players who's willing to innovate on a regular basis. Partially because of his playstyle, and partially because I think he just enjoys it. 
but some Caduceus Reactor for that double energy regen on the Metavax, which allows a lot more supply to be committed into non-Metavax. Disruptor shots find big connections in the center, but Clem has already replaced the supply. He's got enough left over to chase it down. The Vikings knocking several Templar out, or Tempest, sorry. Maybe need some Templar at this stage, though ghosts effectively invalidate them. A single carrier and two Tempests. Max Packs may be shifting into the carriers. Kind of odd to just be building one of them. Gonna go through the rocks, open up an opportunity through the gold mineral gap here. The golden gap. As the disruptors, though, gonna get chased down. There's a, a dodge is out of the stasis. That's not how that works. Unfortunately, you can't hit stasis units with disruptors. Hmm. More observers getting taken out. DT's driven away. The three siege tanks still holding the line for Clem to the north. And Max Pax is trying to find a way to break Clem's defenses. But Clem is fighting back just as hard. Max Pax has a lot of money in the bank. Disruptors are going to all be taken out at point blank range. The Vikings are chasing down the Colossi, who will crumble to the combined effort of the Bio and the Vikings. A carrier has arrived, but not where it wants to be. The Vikings take it out before it can even launch its interceptors. Down go the Tempest. The Stalkers stripped away from their shields, and with no support, they'll have to warp in another round. Max Pax plummets 50 supply. He's still got money in the bank. The DTs forcing the issue back at home. He micros back. Viking hits the deck. And yes, the DTs will, well, all get cleaned up. Max Pax still has money, but he's lost this uh, DLC part of the map. Clem shooting his own medevax. I don't think he's freeing up supply. Somehow just misclicked his own medevax. Three carriers, three disruptors on the way, but Max Pax has taken a significant blow here. He had enough money in the bank to rebuild once. And now the Vikings disrupt their shots through another golden gap. Trying to zone out here. Siege tank worked its way into the composition. Liberators on the field five at a time, I might add. And so might Clem. Possibly because he can't build anymore because he's literally maxed. Max Pax has refilled and he still has more money in the bank. So even though Clem did terrible, terrible damage to the army and is now denying multiple bases with ranged liberators, there's still, is that the same Phoenix from earlier? What a hero. Still around to deal with this, but Max Pax has even taken the base to the north. Both, both rich Vespine bases taken by Max Pax right now, though. Can he hold on to them? That's another story. The liberators will siege up. Carriers trying to fight the Vikings. Disruptors looking for an opportunity. And he loses one almost immediately. Has to pull the Zealots out of the way. The Interceptors being shot out of the sky. There's just not enough of them to overwhelm the anti-air. Even the Ghosts are pretty good against them. Max Pax is maxed out. But it looks pretty impotent at the moment. He needs to bring it all together to deal with this. Trying to save the third base. There's still some resources left. The Carriers working their way through the Liberators as the Bio Army is forced back by a tide of Zealots. 27 probes dead, and Max Pax has drained his entire mineral bank. But he still has some gas. Does he even have a Templar Archives? No. Hi, Templar. Well, I guess you could make Archons out of DTs, but so far have not been a priority. A multi-siege protecting the northern base. But that means Clem has a lot of army supply committed to that northern side of the Golden Gap strikes once again. The Purification Nova nails a bunch of the bio underneath. And the carriers are actually starting to make some progress here. He got a bunch of the Marines and Ghosts in the mix. More coming down from the north side. The Hero Phoenix finally dies. More Vikings on the way. The Terran Army starting the flank. Interceptors flung every which way. Gonna get picked off by some of the Vikings and missile turrets. The Ghost never says die except for its last words. More shots coming out. The Vikings kiting back. Disruptor shot through the mix. Finds nothing. Another Ruptor. May clip a ghost. Doesn't find it either. The Vikings kiting. Gonna kill another carrier. The Stalkers in between the command center and the edge of the map. And a dodge back forward. 
It manages to miss that disruptor shot. And again, Max Pax and Clem battling it out, and the supplies are battered down to 160 apiece, with no money in the bank. Max Pax reaches for the mothership and three more carriers, the most expensive choices in the Protoss arsenal. Are they the right ones? Well, history will be written by the victor here. And so far, it's unclear. Even though Clem feels like he's winning most of the fights, and in fact, Max Pax has lost 8,000 more minerals, and 3,000 more gas. This is still an incredibly hard army to break. Does he have a nuke? Well, he also has a gun, which is like a nuke, but much smaller. And also very different, but similar. And kills probes, too. Wow. Um, yeah. Well, Cloak Ghost actually getting a real amount of kills. Nine kills! Ten! There's a fight happening, and oh, Max Pack's looking the other way, gonna lose one disruptor two disruptors, the others are wandering in, and that cloak ghost, it might not be part of the main fight, but Max Pack's clearly looking the wrong way, and Clem is able to jump the army. Max Pax loses a bunch of probes and his disruptors. The mothership has arrived, but Max Pax is running out of steam, and more importantly, minerals and gas here. That's a lot of carriers. The f what? A <laughs> force field. Almost like a nervous tick there, but... The mothership, not affected by EMP at least. Time warp could be a decider. That's a lot of ghosts and vikings though. Plus two ship weapons and plus one plating is done for that Sky Terran army. Nuclear missile has been launched towards the six o'clock base but the battle will be decided here in the middle of the field. Max Pax needs to win a fight very soon. Otherwise, it's not going to matter anyways. The new lands kills a, a couple probes. The rest were able to retreat. Max Pax is chasing down. The army supplies are near even. The interceptors being flung out. More Vikings are coming down. There's 17 on the field, but the carrier count is still so damn high. There are some disruptors underneath, though not getting shots off during all this. Liberators participating in the anti-air battle. It's unclear underneath, but Max Pax just doesn't have enough in the skies. Clem holds the line, and Max Pax is driven back. They're just... he just couldn't break him. It's just not enough. Clem, at the end of the day, holds strong. The Vikings and the Ghosts, too much for Max Pax to handle. That started with a bunker rush, and he turned the entire map into one big bunker by the end. It is a difficult style for Protoss to deal with. Max Pax has been taking the uh, attrition route in both the in the last few weeks of matches, but I'm not sure. He so one thing I want to point out. Not that I, uh, one, I, I legitimately don't know if there's a... Gimme, please. Thank you. Game two is on Oceanborn. Clem's in the top left. Um, Max Pax is in the bottom right in the red. Just want to make sure I commentate for my blind viewers out there. Shout out. Kind of have to. Um, what is the answer? Max Pax did not build a Templar archives the entire game. He had gas in the bank. Thing is, ghosts and liberators exist. So between EMP and liberators versus Archons, the problem with Archons is they are uh, kind of dumb and they're quite large. Dummy thick, if you would. So even if you have them against the bio army, getting them within range to actually attack anything meaningfully without your entire army tripping up or having them allowing them to have more than 10 HP, because EMP, of course, will strip it away. That's a struggle on a regular basis. So, and I, I trust Max Pax as, in my opinion, the best Protoss in the world. He's tried it. He's tried the High Templar. He's played, he's played Clem enough, more than anyone else probably, even Cyril, because Cyril doesn't participate. Well, Cyril has started his military service, 
for Finland, um, who will be gaining a massive tactical victory, but uh, unfortunately for all of us, we'll have to get by with um, everyone else. It'll be an interesting... Though, just side note, Cyril does plan on still. If you haven't yet seen the uh, 200,000 subscriber special where Cyril was kind enough to sit down, yes, Clem's doing Reaper things. Um, but where Cyril was kind enough to sit down for almost two hours and watch some horrible replays and also one of his own. Um, he does plan on still participating in the major tournament. So essentially, we're still going to get Cyril likely in all the tournaments we would have seen him in anyways. Since Cyril never came down from his ivory tower to pick up the, the chump change of the regular weekly cups. Which, uh, I do feel... I missed the opportunity to ask him why. Though I think the, like, why don't you, and to an extent Maru, play in these weekly cups or tournaments? I do wonder how much is um, to hide your strategies and how much is you just don't care. Like, <laughs> But I did miss that opportunity, unfortunately. Thankfully, we do have these great games every week, though. Where was I? I got completely distracted. I don't need, I, I'm, I'm trying, I'm asking my brain now. Um, please tell me where I was. Max Pack's the best Protoss, Clem amazing, Templar being sad. Um, that's most of the story of SC2 though. It's just Templar being upset. And SC1, I think. One way or another. You can't hide from the Cyclones. Um... Oh yeah, Sarah will still be participating in all the tournaments. I'm sorry, I got a little off track here, but Max Pax is back on track. Four gate blink stalker. Four? Three. Three gate blink stalker. So, he tried the more drawn out macro oriented route. This time around, well, we'll see if he can blink well enough or if he'll miss it. The Stalkers are going the other way. I don't think either army saw each other. Only one can recall. But Clem's army is significantly better in a straight-up fight. The Blink Stalkers do anything but straight-up fight. Oh my god. Well, this is a bit of a giveaway of where the rest of the units are. It's a really a now-or-never situation. Are you going to recall to the natural? You're going to try to come back. Looks like he's going to uh, work his way back. So, this has its own risks here. The the wall off at the natural now used against him. The Blink Stalkers, though, on either side, trying to target down the tanks, using the Warp Prism to work his way back. And without the Siege tanks, the Bio Army Stim now done. He stims, he's going straight for the probes. But Max Pax made the right call in coming back the, the more conventional manner with the Blink Stalkers. will hunt down and kill every Marine. So now we're left in a very awkward scenario. Where Max Pax is down seven, eight workers. But Clem has lost most of his army. And he's facing down a ton of stalkers. He knows it's blank coming across the map. Does he even have a starport? He knows where the observer is. Denying the observer, but there's still a warp prism for high ground vision. He just started the starport. Blinks in towards the main. The siege tank is very well placed to deal with this, and all the upgrades are already done. So Max Pack struggling to find any purchase here. Just gonna have the four stalkers for killing SCVs, but that siege tank is just in the perfect spot. He's able to zone out everything but the very corner of the base, so everything meaningful is being protected by that tank. Another tank on the low ground. Another set of volleys and a bunch of marauders will easily dispatch the stalkers. So any sort of... Magspex is running out of options. He's trying to fight this out. Juggling the shields here. He does have an observer in place. Can spot, well, most of everything. Right up until Clem shoots it down. Another observer coming across. There's a dark shrine on the way. Max Pax has caught up. He's been chrono boosting probes. He's caught up in the worker count. He's now got DTs almost immediately 
on defending that attack, he slapped down the Dark Shrine. And now the DTs are ready to go. There are missile turrets. Uh, there's a missile turret at the natural, mostly for zoning out observers. But DTs could buy some more time here. Clem does not have his third command center even done yet. Just now finishing up. It's a big deal in this exact scenario. As Max Pax has been shoring up his economy and has far outstripped Clem uh, when it comes to the worker count. DT slices away an SCV. And now Clem's on the run. He's got to build a missile turret here. Max Pax is just trying to draw out a scan. Is there no scan? One second. That should do it. But he gets five workers and a scan. So big win there for Max Pax. But the stalkers are caught. And that could turn it a bit. Another DT being warped in. He's going to lose two stalkers out on the map. Wow, Clem getting so greedy. Going for even more. DT comes back into the main. Will be scanned. Gets a few more workers. But each scan is some economic damage. A Templar Archives. The building, pretty much the one building that Max Pax did not build the entirety of last game. He built everything else. Fleet Beacon, uh, Twilight, all the upgrades. He even built a mothership, but he didn't get the Templar Archives. This time around, though, it will be the choice. The DT still going to work. Plus one, done. Eleven, and Storm. So, oh my god. He's dodging DT. Oh my god. <laughs> well, he eviscerates one of them. Oh my <sighs> Dodging DTs with... Because te technically the animation does take a bit as well. But Marauders, of course, can take a hit or two. But only one or two. There is no Ghost Academy. The storm could be devastating. I think Max Pax, by going for DTs here, so um, flamboyantly, is going to remove the threat of ghosts just... Clem just focused on building up an army, because usually when you go DTs, you follow it up with just that mass gateway style, because DTs themselves are quite expensive. But Max Pax has a storm prism. Hey, Jim, Jimmy! I, <clears throat> remember! Sorry. DT in the main. And stalkers at the front. Zealots! These storms are going to have to be absolutely massive. But the Zealots actually dragged back here. And with the Zealots dragging the entirety of Clem's army back, in that time, is so incredibly important. He desperately needed that. And now the army is all grouped up. That prism dropping out the Templar, and the storms are ripping through. Though the Bio Army still survives with enough intact in order to continue forward, but another storm, category five. The Marauders are able to weather it. The Marines, many of them died. The me Medivacs will actually pick up and try to retreat here. The Breadcrumb Widowmines at the back. Gonna try to tank a Widowmine hit. Dodges with the War Prism, more storms on the way. He's whittled it down, there's almost no Marines left, but the Marauders are still a massive threat. Ghost Academy is on the way. No armory at all for Clem. So the armory no longer keeps the Widowmines cloaked after firing, but getting 2-2 upgrades is pretty important and slightly cheaper with the new patch, so I am surprised at, at Terrans who are still very, very delayed on getting that armory. Yes, the unit composition is incredibly important. Getting ghosts out, getting Vikings, but it, it's only 50 gas now. Everything about getting plus two upgrades is cheaper. All right, you get a coupon. If my mom was to be trusted, if you don't use that coupon, it's like losing money. That's what they always say. Either get your plus two in a timely manner, or it's like losing the game. Brenda would love Joanne's fabrics. Plenty of knitting needles. Max Pax, 80 props. Again. All right, here we are again. Max Pax has... A good economy. He has more bases. He has most of the splash damage he can get. He's now working in towards Colossi. Can he break Clem, who is on a, a relatively low economy, just on three bases? But it is up to Max Bags here. 
to find a way to actually fight. And the storms will open things up. So I'm arcing out around. Plus two is now done. Max pack's well on the way to plus three. Extended thermal lance about to complete. Five Vikings on the field, 24 Marauders, four Ghosts. So not an overwhelming number, especially when you consider they have so much work to do against this army. The Widow Mines, the Charge Lots Idiot, EMPs across the bow. They hit pretty much every single Templar. The Terran Army arcs around and will gun down the Archons. There's just one Colossus juggled back. A second Colossus shows up. Widow Mines connecting on both fronts. Charge Lots coming in from the north side. And Clem is forced back with a Colossi. Can focus them down. The, the Vikings are gone here. And the Colossi are still going to work. There is... There are two Widow Mines. Still a major threat. He's retreating back. But another huge warp in out of Max Pegs. A whole bunch more gateway units out in front of the Colossi. Two of them badly bruised, distracted as easily as they are by the Orbital Command, but they're still intact. And Max Pax comes away with a 20 supply lead. Though he didn't deny the fourth base out of Clem, and he didn't break the economy by killing a bunch of SCVs either. So Clem will have some time to rebuild, but Max Pax made up a lot of ground there. And opened up quite a gap between them. Plus three attack is done. Those Colossi still alive here. Eight and seven kills between them, but there's still such a threat. Two immortals at a time. The storm softening things up. He's got the Templar and a prism. Two immortals. He really wants to deal with those marauders that are left over against the storm. All right, Templar loaded into the prism. Immortals added in. Clem does have plus two weapons done, and he's about to finish plus two armor. So he has that going for him. But the army gonna be caught to start, and the storm will help. EMP has come through, but a uh, rough start to things as even more of the army gets caught during a rally point, and Clem just taps it out mid-fight. It was not trending well for him, but Max Pax is able to catch him out in the field and smash him between the storms and the Colossi. And that is a well-deserved win out of Max Pax there after a hard-fought game starting off. Able to hold it together. The Blink Stalkers coming back and dealing with the siege tanks early. Even if they weren't able to get counter damage done, Max Pax decided... Uh, to play it out and go for the economy there. And that made all the difference. I think Clem just relying on his unit composition coming through, but Max Pax finally reaches for the storm. And it's enough. Okay, fine. Yes, it makes sense. And oh my. Well, Max Pax has taken the goal. On the outside. Which actually makes a lot of sense against early aggression. Because that way they can't use the mineral wall against you. Well, unless they have reapers, which unfortunately... Uh, Clem is, is pretty commonly known for. But no, this wasn't an NG Bay block or anything. This is Max Pax just taking the gold. Uh, and grabbing it before Clem can do anything about it. Now the Reaper is scouting that immediately. Probably expecting a gold base on the other side. We've seen some Zergs do this as well. Preemptive shield battery. The probe? Well, I don't think the probe's gonna make it out of this one, but... Can you do the little pylon thingy? I don't think you can do, like, a, a probe teleport. Um, by smushing it through a pylon with no space there, but... Reaper gets in. Gonna take a look around. Adept? Well, the Adept can't go around the cliff. He recalls probes at a bit of an awkward time here, but the shield battery will prevent the majority of the damage. Yeah. Well. Hmm. How long does it take a, a Reaper to make it through a shield battery? Of course, you do have shield battery overcharge as well if it runs out of energy. Hmm. 
Stalker chasing down the Reaper. Going to be able to intercept. Hunted from both sides. Does get away, of course. Probe at the front. These two Hellions. Very important to see that. You just see a reactor factory? Could be Cyclones. Could be Widowmons. Seeing the Hellions is a big deal. And gives Max Packs a ton of info on how to respond to this directly. Alright, Starport about to complete. We'll see. Likely a medevac, but there's so many options. St Stalker finally takes out the, the Reaper. Hellions! Just gonna ignore the gateway units in favor of getting by. Only takes three to kill probes uh, without the shield battery intervening. But the Hellions are deflected, and the Oracle is able to finish with the Stalker and Adept started. So overall, Clem, he went for, by the way, he went for a double gas on one base. He went for a very heavy tech build to try to get some damage done. And so far, it has not worked out, but he is building Reactor Cyclone. And so far, Max Pax has not followed this up with any uh, Phoenixes. We'll see if he does when he, when he realizes that's still a potential option. Losing the Oracle would be pretty devastating here. There's still two Cyclones zoning out the gold base, which have the same range uh, as the Stalkers here, so... Now the Hellions coming through, doing enough damage to actually kill some more probes. Coming back in for another pass. But now there should be enough Stalkers to deal with the clones. Two shots and down it goes. And now we can deny Clem's mining at the gold. Now three Cyclones trying to micro back. Blink is only halfway done. He's just going to fight it heads up. A mule miss. It <laughs> considered an absolutely incredibly BM move. Max Pex agrees. <laughs> Come, you know, it's actually a big blow there. Misclicking a mule like that. Uh, to your economy. Not only emotionally, but that was supposed to be a portion of, of Clem's economy going forward. <laughs> He missed by a lot, too. I don't know if he was planning on scanning or what exactly happened there. But either way, clearly not going great, though. That siege tank shot really softened up several stalkers. So, Max Pax will be forced back for now. The subconscious mule. Blink is done. Oracle, I think he spotted the tank up there. Clem loses the depot. Revelation doesn't actually uh, tag the tank directly. There's a Templar archives on the way. As Mechpex discovered the value of Storm. Well, this is another scenario where Clem is on a relatively small economy. Like, you can't have every piece of tech here. He has one and a half bases. He hasn't been comfortably mining from the gold at all. He's only got 40 SCVs. So if Max Pax can get Storm by the time any sort of army comes across the map with, uh, say, Stim Combat Shield plus one, well, he's cooking. All right. Uh, and Psy Storm is a well-known uh, strong ingredient for, for cooking with the Iron Chef, which always a bit ironic, right? As Protoss cannot eat, but they still would like to grill the Terrans. Moving on. Viking zoning out the Oracle, but the Revelation tags the Medivacs, and that's the most important part. Max going to try to shave away some of the units. Combat shield done, but Storm, two-thirds of the way there. War Prism is on the way. Gets a Medivac, blinks out. So smooth. Clem is chasing. Oracle. Ooh, gets another Marauder. Max Pax doing a great job of uh, slowing this down. Concussive Shell's not done either. So not able to chase, but the storms could be absolutely devastating. Thing is, Max Pax also has a solid ground army here. Even without Storm, he might have enough to challenge him on the field. Clem's army has been whittled down, and without the siege tanks especially, would be very dangerous to even be out on the field against the Gateway army. There's the War Prism. 
Couple of zealots getting caught. Flem, does he have a third command center? He does. But Magspax realizes he might have an opportunity. The entire army stims. And there's only three medevacs on the field right now. So they don't have infinite energy, though it can feel like it sometimes. Magspax comes in towards the gold. Trying to come around again. And the Marauders. Marines. Siege tanks on the high ground. But the Templar, the storm, he eats uh, the brunt of it there. Loses a few Marines, softens up the rest. The, the medevacs are nearly out of energy. They can't even heal all these units up to full. They will be fully drained. Four siege tanks are enough to uh, zone max packs out for now. But that one storm, and now three Archons on the way. No, not even a hint of ghosts on the field. So nothing to really eat through those shields. And that is a lot of Protoss coming in. The storm's on the back line. On to the tanks on the high ground, softening them up. Blink Stalkers will target them down. Still some Templar, still some storms. He goes into the Archons. And actually, Clem doing an okay job of cleaning it up, but not so much so he doesn't type GG when another war pit starts. Oh. Magspax with a strong hold and then clears the field. Another solid victory for the Twilight Toss, and this time embracing all the tools. The Templar especially. Clem unable to really make much happen. I, I think the expanding outside because it's such an aggressive move, putting yourself out there. Like, even though Clem was going for the heavy tech early on, like he was going for a reactor factory, but Max Pax had already preemptively defended the base. It wasn't like he was trying to take it. It was already taken. So much so Liam Neeson wanted to find it and wanted to kill it, but he couldn't, and Clem couldn't find it either. Uh, two to one Max Pax, match point, sight dealt to game four. One racks expand out of Clem. That SCV conveniently building in the middle of the thing. The thing. The command center. Ooh, rough day today when on the words front. A marine and then a reactor behind. And he's keeping that marine on the high ground. I think intentionally trying not to show it. He could have maybe sniped off the probe, but... He wants to keep Max Pax guessing and, and implying there's a Reaper on the way. As. Whoa! What do we have here? That is a pylon. That's a probe. The source of said pylon. And. A proxy gate? Alright. Interesting. Remember, it feels like so long ago now. And it kind of was. It was like four years. When Max Pax first came onto the scene with the. Max Pax build, which was simply just proxying your first gate. Instead of bothering with proxying a second gate, you proxy your first gate in order to, and then just recall home if you need to, which was surprisingly effective. Uh, Max Pax has since fleshed out his playstyle from a single kind of cheesy uh, proxy to being the best overall Protoss in the world, but uh, never forget your origins here as a gateway is proxied in the corner. An interesting choice. I think he's feigning. Like, like, Clem hid those marines and tried to snipe off the adept, but this looks like a stargate. When you build these adepts like this, it's supposed to telegraph a stargate. Um, now, Clem kind of has the preemptive counter in just, you know, having marines, which a solid choice in general. A bunch of marines have almost never been the wrong call. But no bunker, on the other hand. The stalkers are warped in, and suddenly Clem... Well, he has a... He still has a bunch of marines. The boys are pulled. The SCVs. And uh, the high ground vision with the shade. Oh, my. He's using the shade as the most high APM. And a... a just a, a off-brand, a generic brand observer here. More adept shading in. 
Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, six SCVs dead. And he's whittling down the Marine count, but behind this, Max Max doesn't have any tech. And with the bunker done, that should be the end of this aggression for the most part. He finished the Twilight Council. He's going for blank now. Clem lost six SCVs, but he has stim most of the way done. He already has three racks. And he's got Marauders on the field. So... Hmm. 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 Combat shield and stim on the way. Mags, it wasn't enough. He still has all these stalkers. He still is able to keep the pressure on. It's going to be far too long to really factor in a star forward here. He's just now finishing the factory. So Clem is going to be working off no medevacs, which makes it very risky to move out just in case there's blink. He can't really risk it until at least stim. And if Blink is done, he could easily get shaved off across the field. Thankfully for Clem, Blink not quite done yet. Though Max Pax backs off. Wow. He dropped a mule. I think he dropped it, like, right where the shade was. Was that intentional? Clem's mules are all over the place today. Like, quite literally. Which is an odd thing, because there's a pretty direct area of where mules should be. A couple of devs go by. Uh, mules are either on your mineral line or as many as possible in your opponent's face when you think you're winning the game. Um, not a random one out there, though. So that is the classic BM move. Uh, mostly out of Korean players, historically. Uh, considered a bit of trash talk there. Um, Non-Korean players have usually gone with the offensive GG sort of style, but mule drops are still up there. I think just blunking in with all your stalkers and dancing around by move commanding in front of your opponent's army is the way to do it. Though so neither of these players too intentionally BM usually. And now we're seeing the value of blink stalkers against non-medevac bio. As Clem just loses all his marauders there. For what? A few stalkers, but... Well, the medevacs are on the way and the Templar archives again. Looks like Max Pax has uh, finally embraced the Templar. Observer taken out. Plus one on the way. And Clem actually has a slight worker lead. Well, that changed immediately, but uh, quite an even game going in about seven minutes now. The Blink Stalkers. Kiting back. Observer spots it. I don't know if them spotted the Observer. Gets another Stalker. Max Pax has got to be very careful right now. This is the most tenuous timing. He does have eight gateways. And he's adding two more. So it's going to be that mass gate. He has leaned into the Psy Storm. And again, there's the Ghost Academy on the way, though. So Psy Storm will be done before any ghosts... Or before ghosts are really on the field. If he builds them immediately, I think it'll be about the same time, but... Hmm. Clem now has all his production online. You can really see it in the supply. Once that third base kicks in and you have barracks four and five up and running, the Terran supply just takes off. The army value, well, that's up until all the gateways are available out of Max Pax, who should be catching up here rather quickly. Still probably going to be 10 to 20 behind, as is just the way of things, but... Scan takes out another observer for Clem. And I'm sure Max Pax will keep building them. Already has another one in production. Robo Bay, second fort. Templar in the prism. The conspicuous prism. The storm hammer. And drops it down yet again! That storm, not quite enough. Another storm. But Clem reacts now. The storm, quite a wake-up call for those bio units. But they did wake up in time to retreat. The medevacs being added in. Vikings scattered in as well. 
The little mines will recharge. They will be dealt with as well. What do we got on the other side? Scouting Marine. Observer somehow managed to make it across again. No, no turrets there to actually take it out. Scouting in towards the main. And Clem's army almost doubled the supply right now. 101 to 57. You know, another warp in will help out a bit. Another observer is taken out. I'm just not letting it happen. The drops are loaded up. But unfortunately, a zealot <laughs> spots it as all of it was happening. Even some ghosts in there. So Magspax now knows that he's threatening. A ghost out in front. Looking for something. The Templar on the prism. But he dodges away from the storm preemptively. Another marine taken out. Max Pack's down 35 supply and he's not banking up for a big warping. He's just trying to get enough on the field. He's done a good job of keeping Clem at bay, but Clem has 2-2 two -two on the way. He's got the planetary fortress at the 3 o'clock. How many colossi? Just one. Second one in production. There are five Vikings on the field, but they're scattered throughout. Clem has multiple armies. Just looking around for an opportunity. Fusion core on the way. No uh, comparable tech out of Max Packs quite yet. But Max Packs a bit out of position. May end up losing the Nexus to the north. Big goes. Soften up the Stalkers. More EMPs. The probes on the run. Uh, Max Packs can afford to lose a few. Still down they Still has 85 even after that. Feedbacks on the ghost. Colossi starting the damage. Trying to kite back. Stalkers in position. Vikings looking forward. Ghost EMPs. But he still has the temporary. Protected him with the prism. And it's getting harder and harder to hold here as Clem's army is bullying its way through the storms. Helping soften things up, but there's more storms at the back. Those Templars still have the energy. And even one EMP might not be enough. Only 100 energy wiped out. I say only. They have 200 in total. And many of those Templars are near that full energy count. Widowman will prevent the re-expand, but should be dealt with. The Stalkers come back like a Carbot animation. Where did you go? Oh. Unfortunately, there's more than one. Clem rotating around, gonna hit the other side as Max Pax attempts to clear up the first one. But that's gonna be scouted out, but there's still an army to the north side. Clem knocks out the base. And Max Pax out of position to deal with another army coming in. We'll scramble back. There are Blink Stalkers in the main to ward away the drop. But Max Pax is scrambling in to defend. He does have the prism. Storms across everything, still more, and softens up the vast majority. The Vikings take it out as well. The storms, even though the Templar weren't able to fully connect, it was more than enough. And now he's going to chase down the medevacs. The bio army, recall, picks up, gets out, goes towards the main. A, a bit of a desperation move out of Clem. Loses two medevacs right off the bat. EMP softens up the stalkers. He'll grab the beachhead here, but at what cost? Immediately has to pick up and get out. Clem losing a critical amount of units. Between the storms and the Blink Stalkers in position to defend, Clem uh, loses both sides of the drop. He's down to 177 supply, desperate to build even more. Caduceus Reactor out on the way. Advanced Ballistics is done for the Liberators. But the Liberators aren't here in enough number to stop the Protoss army. Four Colossi stepping forward. There's almost no Vikings to match them. EMPs, Archons with less than full HP, which is a trying sight indeed. More EMPs, Colossi distracted by the barracks, their biggest enemy. Any buildings nearby. The Vikings looking for an angle, finding it over the top of the orbital, but hitting all the different Colossi. A missile turret on the way, but Max Pax just powers through and strong arms Clem off the field. The Colossi just burning through as Clem overextended and took two big hits on either side. And Max Pax drives the stake home 
with the extended thermal lances of the Colossi. The storm making its way through the bio army and having uh, possibly the most effective storms I've seen in Protoss versus Terran in uh, uh, probably too long. Well, at the end of the day, Max Pax with a quite a decisive 3-1 victory, reversing last week's result. Can't wait for the next one. Um, but thank you for watching. Hopefully it made your day a little bit better. If you haven't yet, checked out. Uh, if you got the means of motivation, it'd be awesome to check out Patreon or YouTube membership. But I hear liking and subscribing. It's still free for now. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't yet checked out the second channel as well, uh, you can find it in the description, Winter Gaming TV. Otherwise, good luck, have fun. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Stay chill.